I'm going to begin our, our master class and the storytelling one verse earlier because there's an important line that gets repeated more or less the same, and I think it's important to hear it from the first source that's used. Mary Magdalene came to the disciples and she said, We have seen the Lord. Now, that evening, the first day of the week, the disciples were gathered together in a room. And though the doors were locked for fear of the others, Jesus came, stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. He said that he showed them his hands and his side. And when the disciples saw that it was the Lord, oh, they rejoiced. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As my Father has sent me, now I send you. He breathed on them. said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they're forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they're retained. Now, Thomas, who's called a twin, he's one of the twelve, wasn't with them when Jesus came. So the disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. Thomas said, you know, unless I see the nail prints in his hands, now, unless I put my finger in the nail prints in his hands, reach out my hand and thrust it in his side, pff, ain't no way I'm believing. A week later, the disciples were again gathered together in a room, and this time Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came, stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Here, Thomas, see my hands? Reach out your hands. Put my fingers in. Put your hand and thrust it into my side. No longer doubt. Believe. Thomas said, Oh, my Lord. My God. Now, Jesus responded to him, Thomas, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other things in the presence of his disciples that aren't recorded in this account. These are recorded so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, believing you might have life in his name. I will confess that this is one of my favorite uh, passages in the scriptures. I love the way how uh, the disciples are locked in to their fears, their grief, their their remorse at what had just happened and their role or non-role in it. But that when Jesus shows up, he lifts them out of their place of grief and remorse and sorrow and puts them down in a new place where all things are made new. Another thing I really like about this is that when you're telling the story, it's one of those times that, to me, feels really sacramental. At first, it tells like I'm telling a story about disciples back then. But in the telling, as I make eye contact with the audience, it's as if they become the disciples in the room, tapping into their own sense of fear as it connects to the disciples of Jesus. And so, suddenly, it goes from being a story about back then, something that happened, to a story that happens now, 
depth and the healing of it. And so when it comes to time where the character of Jesus is breathing on the disciples, I want it to feel as though uh, he is offering the people listening in this moment, like you, the Holy Spirit. Right? So it goes from being about back then becoming an event in the present. present. I also like uh, the way that the, the hands of Jesus, the wounds of Jesus, frame the story. And so that how he comes and uh, there's all these repetitions in there. First you have Mary saying, I have seen the Lord, and I try to repeat the gesture when the disciple, the other disciples steal her sermon, we have seen the Lord. Their response, they're still locked up in a room in fear after Mary speaks to them, is not all that different than Thomas's. Um, they announce to him a word, and he is uh, still stuck in a place that he can't get out of on his own. And then framing his remarks of peace were these signs of the violence that had been committed against him. Jesus goes from offering peace to his disciples to offering them a call, and I suspect, suspect a warning. Still framing his remarks with his wounded hand, he says, as the Father sends me, I send you. I'd also note um, that he gives them this, this power to forgive sins. And sometimes the church has taken that as the authority to decide whose sins are bad but forgivable and whose sins are beyond the scope of God's mercy. But in the context of this story, the disciples, having been complicit in the death of Jesus, having abandoned him in his hour of need, I can't imagine what the sins would be that would put them beyond the grace of God. I think the the message is you are receiving a word in this very moment that got you unstuck. If you share it with others, they will know the peace that flows out of that. But if you don't, where will their release come from? And then finally, I want to note a moment where there's even one more level. So, as I said, Jesus speaks to the disciples. Suddenly he's speaking to you, his disciples. And then he has this interchange with Thomas. And then it's as though Jesus, in his conversation with Thomas, knows about us, will not have the benefit of seeing the resurrected Jesus as um, Mary Magdalene did, as, as the other disciples did. Right? And so it goes from a conversation to Thomas, blessed are those, oh wait, we have some examples right here, those listening. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. My prayer is that this has been a fruitful time of learning for you, and that uh, in the entering into the story, you have deepened your belief that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and in that deepening, you too have life in his name. Thanks for joining me on this journey. Have a blessed Easter season.